Hey everyone, Eric here. For all those who have put in these Wemo light switches and you put the switch covers back on and you have a nice little gap around the side, like right here we got a nice little gap, it's not tight. Right down here, the plate doesn't uh, sit far enough back where you can push the little reset button. We're going to work on getting rid of that today. And I'll go through how I'm going to do this. Alright, so before we start, we're going to end up and mark on each side of this wall plate here. I'm going to put a little mark here with a sharpie. And I'm going to put a little mark on this side with a sharpie too. This is going to be my reference lines. So on this box here, this box is built into the house. It's not a retrofit box. And this side of the box actually sits inside the wall. Whereas this one is sticking outside of the wall. So we're putting the reference points here and here, here and here. Because we're going to take a Dremel tool and we're going to shave the box back to get this flush to the wall. This side on this particular one is fine. So this side of the cover sits flush. This side of the cover sticks out. Without this plug, it's sit flat to begin with. But once you put this on, excuse me, plug, light switch. Once you put this light switch in here, it now pushes it out due to the thickness of the casing. So let's get started. You know, first start by unscrewing the light switch. For some of you that aren't electrical savvy, you might want to turn off your power when you're doing this. I've done light switches and electrical outlets and stuff for many years. I'm not a professional at high voltage, but I've worked with it enough where I feel comfortable. So, okay. So right here on this box here, this box is sticking out on this side. It's not going to go back in. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use my reference line here and here. I'm going to use my Dremel tool and I'm going to shave it back on the, on the um, top and I'm going to do the same on the bottom. We're going to put it back together and see if that then takes care of the issue. So I've got my Dremel tool I'm using. Let me show you here. So for me, I've got a Dremel tool and I got my little pen attachment. just makes it easier for me, less bulky. You guys can use whatever works for you if you are going to try and tackle this. Let's get started. Always wear safety glasses on of some sort. I've got my, my eyeglasses on because I can't see without them. So here we go. So I'm going to take this and get it flush to the wall. together here very simple just shave this down so this little lip right here is still a little high this side still a little high we're gonna end up and put the switch back on 
If we need to shave down this side of the box to make it sit flusher, we will. But let's try it this way first and see what happens. Let's see if we have some success. First, I gotta find the second screw that I dropped. All right, let's get this, this one on first. Hopefully this did the trick. Something, something real simple. I've seen a lot of people on the internet talk about how their wall plates just stick out too far when you're putting these on. I've seen them more with the retrofits, the, the blue work boxes that they call it. I've seen them with that. But as you see here, this is not a retrofit box. All right, let's get the top screw on. And then we're gonna see if the wall plate fits flush. Crossing my fingers just did the trick. I have about 16 of these Waymo devices throughout the house. And they look, the wall plates look ugly where they're sticking out. For several years I've been looking at them trying to figure out, you know, what can I do different to make this thing sit flush? And I hadn't figured it out until just recently. All right, so now that's back in. Now let's see what's happening. You can't really see it from the camera here, but you can see, I can see that this part is now behind this lip here. So it is actually doing what it's supposed to be doing right now. Let's see now if it will sit flat. Okay, so, so it is not sitting flat right now. Let's see why. Put the screw in there. So the bottom on this one is still not sitting flat. Let's figure out why. It might be some of this here. Let's see. Let's take some more off. I don't think it's the side of this box, but we're gonna find out. Anticipate this made anything different, but we're gonna we're gonna check and see. So I've made this whole side now flush to the wall. Let's see if that has any difference. did not. It's still sticking out on the bottom a little bit. 
Yes, it is. So what we're going to do on this situation is I'm going to take out a little bit of the right underneath here. I'm going to take a little bit of this out. So this goes back a little further. We're going to give that a shot. Just need it to go back a little bit so that plate cover will go on flush. Yeah, actually this part of the, the cover is behind the wall. Let's, let's, let's see what we can do here. Once again, and see if that got the bottom part to go back in further. What it might be on this one too is this box does move, so when I'm tightening it up, it might just be pulling it further out from the wall, which is possible. I've done this on a couple, the blue rework boxes. It only takes a few minutes on those. I haven't had any issues getting those to sit flush. We're going to do one of those in a after this one, but it won't have any Wemo switches in it. It'll just be regular light switches that I changed a two gang to a three gang, and now the switch cover doesn't sit flush. So we're gonna we're gonna tackle that one next. Let's hope that. This one here will go on. It's pretty packed behind here with the wires too, so that's probably not helping this situation out very much. tighten the screws up I usually try and get the screw to the bottom hole because that's where the that's where the face plate goes in. Okay so let's see if this made any difference. Oh beautiful yes that absolutely made a difference. Okay so now now I'm going to put the screws back on and we'll see how it looks before and after. 
Oh yes. Night and day difference there. you're putting your screws down on your face plates. I'm a little anal. A lot of electricians, they'll make them go straight up and down. People that don't really know, they'll just tighten them up until it's tight. Put it straight up and down. Look, looks like you know what you're doing. Not perfect, perfect, but the gap is far less. Let me show you what it looks like. All right, guys and gals. So here's the finished product. I did go back in off camera and just shave down the bottom side of the junction box once more because I just didn't like it uh, as much. And now <clears throat> you can see it's pretty tied up against the wall. The cover's been bent for well, geez, at least a year now with it in there, the plastic cover. So if I went and bought a new one, it would probably sit even a little bit tighter. But I'm perfectly fine with this. There's no big gap anymore. Right here, the reset button is now flush. You don't have to, like, stick a pen, pen or pencil if you ever need to reset it. It's flush right here. I think that's a job well done. All right, guys and gals, we're back at it again with another one. This is one about a year ago. I took out the two gang built-in box and I switched it out for a three gang retrofit box. But in doing so, I now have a gap on that side and you can't really see it on this side. And, and what that was for is I put in a Oh man, you can't really tell right there. But I put in a exhaust fan into the bathroom. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do the same thing we did on the, the dual game. We're gonna take this off, file down the box where it needs to be filed down, and see if we can get this to sit more flush. The end result, I think, will be good. Stay tuned. All right. We're going to be back at it with this three gang and we're going to see if we can get this cover to sit more flush to the wall. Now these are not smart switches like Wemo switches, they're just your standard Decora style on off switch. The concept of what I'm going to do here is exactly the same as what we did downstairs. We're going to try and file away that box that's sticking out a little bit and keeping the wall plate from sitting back. So what you can see in here on this one, this is a retrofit box. So it's sticking a little further out. So that's why we're having a problem with the wall plate. So we're gonna shave this back a little bit. And again, I'm gonna use the marker because we don't wanna cut these ears off on the side because if you cut the ears off on the side, then that switch isn't going to fit in there. Or actually not the switch, the junction box is going to fall through the wall. So we don't want that to happen. So we're going to shave this back a little bit. And we're going to see what's going to happen here. Yeah, I don't like these retrofit boxes because they, they do stand out quite a bit further than in a one that's built in. So let's see what we can accomplish today. So 
Again, you don't want to shave off any of this because these, these tabs here are helping it hold into the wall. Again, I would suggest turning off the power if you're working on these. Do as I say, not what I do. Okay, so what I'm going to end up and do is I'm going to shave this down enough to get it flush with right in here. So from here to here, I'm going to get it flush to there, top and bottom. And then we're going to try this all over again. And I'm going to end up and do it with this one, most likely that one, and that one. So let's see what happens here.
So you see I got both sides, top and bottom, shaved down without touching the outside where it's pushing onto the holding it onto the wall. If I take these off, it's just gonna fall right through. So you don't want that. So now I should be able to put the screws back in. And now this is back further. So with it being back further, it should suck that wall plate in farther. Now I wasn't having a problem in the middle. The outside one on both sides were sticking out slightly. You can't really see it on the other side. But I'm gonna check this one, see what it does. And then I'm probably gonna fix them all. I'm just gonna start with this one. I'll have to fix them all now because this switch will be further back than the other two switches. But when you're putting in light switches and stuff, they usually, the little metal ears are usually up against the wall here. So in this case, they're not against the wall because of this junction box. They're, they're out as far as the junction box, which that then pushes that face plate out that much farther. So let's get this, let's get this back in here. So this is now going to go inside, so it's already past it's already past that junction box, and it's touching the wall. All right, that one's touching the wall. That one's touching the wall. Let me put the face plate again. The face plate is probably a little warped. See what it does here. Let's see what we got here. Let's loosen it up a tad so we can push it over. All right, let's see. Oh, yes, that side is up against the wall right now. Let me do the other two. And then we're going to come back. I'll show, I'm not going to record that because you already have the idea of it. I'm going to take care of the other two. Then I'll end up and take a picture close up where you'll see all three of them inset. And then I'll take a picture with the finished product with the faceplate back on, not sticking out. I'll see you guys in a bit. Thank you. All right, guys. About 15 minutes later, I'm done with my trimming out around the light switches you can see i've trimmed out from here to here here to here here to here same thing on the bottoms and that gets these metal tabs up against the wall that way the wall cover will go flat against the wall otherwise this box here, this box is sticking out a little bit. It's all the way up against the wall right here. You can't put it back any farther, but it has a lip. That lip right there, along with a smart switch, makes it stick out pretty good. But with a regular switch, it makes it stick out a little bit as well. Not as much as a smart switch, but it still makes it stick out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to screw the cover plate back on. And we're going to see if it's up against the wall. Be right back. All right, guys and gals, so everything is put back together and it is nicely tucked down to the wall better. Again, my wall plate's a tad warped because it's been sitting in that position for, I'm guessing, a year, give or take. But if you look at the before and after, which I will post, you'll see that this made a huge difference. That is definitely something I can live with. I had it looking the way it looked before for quite some time. It always bothered me when I would see it. You know, the side on this side here, you don't see it because the wall's right here. But on this side here, when you're coming out into the bedroom, you can see it and I don't like it. Most people wouldn't notice it, but since I did the work, I noticed it. I am now happy. I can sleep good tonight. I hope this has taught you guys something and it will help you if you ever encounter something like this. But make smart choices when working with electrical. Always turn the power off. As I said before, do as I say, not what I do. Electricity kills. So make sure that you work safe. Wear your safety goggles. This project only took a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, and a Dremel tool. And that's all it took and a little bit of time. And now I get to clean up my, my mess down here. 
you know, vacuum time. And then I'm going to spend the rest of my day here Saturday relaxing. Again, thank you for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't like it, give me a comment too or thumbs down. You know, just trying to help out the community here and I hope it helped out at least one person. Thanks a lot.